Good morning. Good morning. Praise Ministries. Come on. Hallelujah. We are so blessed to have you with us today. We thank God for this opportunity to come into your homes and also to be here in person to bring to you a message of hope and a song of cheer. And we trust that day that somebody in the building, somebody listening, will turn their life over to Jesus is what it's all about. Amen. 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 It's all about. Um, I guess you know my wife is not here. My wife and daughter are out of town celebrating a birthday. All of us couldn't go because somebody had to be here. <laughs> and my son is out here holding it down, so she's not here before you. So bear with me today as I go through our um, announcements, our morning prayer. And let's talk with a word of prayer. Father, we are so grateful today to see another day we never saw before, to experience your blessings, brand new mercies that we had woke up to this morning. We thank you. We don't have to settle for any stale mercies, but you gave us brand new mercies this morning. And for this, we say thank you. We thank you, Father, for all your blessings, all your mercies. Now, God, we call upon you during this worship experience. Somebody's out there or maybe in here that needs a word of hope. Father, send a song, send a prayer that will lift their hearts and their spirits towards you. Let them know that you are the answer to all situations. And we just present ourselves to you today, God, that you would get the glory out of our life, the glory out of the, this ministry, the, go the glory out of this moment that we share with your people, oh God. We invite your spirit to have his way in and through our lives. We give you praise, honor, and glory because you are worthy of the praise, the honor, and the glory. We bless you today, God, for all the things you have done and what you shall do. We thank you for making ways out of no ways. We thank you for bringing my son out of the hospital two times in, in a couple weeks and bringing him here and having him looking much better. I thank you for that. Thank you for those of us who have been struggling through the week. You saw us through another week. We don't want to stop without saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us through another week of trials and tests. But you proved yourself strong. You proved yourself worthy. You proved yourself faithful one more time. And we just want to bless your name today, God. We give you glory and honor and praise and that's due to your name. We thank you right now for all your blessings and commend our way to you this day. So get the glory out of the things that we should share this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How many know here know, know God is good? Amen. Yes. Good. Not some of the time. He's good what? All, All of the time. All of the time God is good. We had a wonderful Sunday school message this morning. Uh, Deacon Joe Miller, Miller brought, facilitated the lesson. It's found in um, Mark 5, 1 through 20. It was entitled Jesus, Jesus overpowers legion. Doesn't matter what you're going through. How many know God's got more power? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. He's got more power than any struggle you're going through. Amen. And it was a wonderful lesson brought forth. Next week, we're going to have Dr. Thompson going to bring facilitate, facilitate the message. The empty tomb, Luke 24, 1 through 12, all our scriptures that we want to read. So be reading those scriptures devotionally this week and ask the Lord to speak to your heart through the word of God. We are excited about all the things. You know, I'm always excited about something, about something that the Lord is constantly doing. He keeps opening new platforms for us. And on Saturday, I think I mentioned to you that our ministry also reaches over to Pakistan, where we where we serve there as uh, teaching a group of, of of believers that are in a, a Muslim country who desire that we would teach them. They're like nine hours ahead of us, so uh, we have to orchestrate our services where it's not too late for them, it's not too early for me. So we met on yesterday and uh, had a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is blessing. And to see the, um, my son would listen, but he didn't see, to see the little children, they have all ages, they're little children standing up, giving God praise. It almost shames me. They would just stand up. I didn't know all it was. I can understand hallelujah, amen. But they would stand up praising God, thanking Lord. I wish we could get that in this atmosphere today. We just take some time out to give God praise. Can we do that right here in this house? They would just stand in that praise. It, it did my heart so good. And then once the leader stopped praying, a little girl stood up and she started praying. This little girl had to be 19 years old or maybe even younger. She's a little thing. She was just praying her heart out. And I was just so excited. I couldn't understand the words, but I, I was excited for the spirit that was there. Amen. Amen. So we had a good time in the Lord there. Amen. Uh, there. So I want you to understand that. So behind this, because Zoom only allows you free 40 minutes, we had to rush through. So what I did yesterday is set up Kingdom Praise Ministry on a paid Zoom. So what this does is gives an opportunity to not only share in Pakistan, but also on Friday night, y'all. We not only have Facebook, 
and conference call, we're now going to have Zoom opportunities. So we can actually see each other and ask questions and interact more. So all those opportunities will be there starting this Friday. I sent the invitation out yesterday, it's on our page, and I'll send one out maybe Thursday, and we can get, all you have to do is click the, hit, click the um, link, and it'll take you right into our, our uh, Zoom link, and we can actually see and talk to each other. So I'm excited. Are y'all excited about what God is doing? Yeah, He's man. opening up new things for us. So every hour, we said, what, beginning of the year was what? Unlimited what? Open Opportunities and possibilities, right? So every platform God gives us, we will walk in there and, and do what we can do for the glory of God. And that's our whole purpose is to get the word of God out. How many know the word of God would change lives? Amen. I got some witnesses in this room right here. They know the word of God Amen. would change lives. Amen. So we have a new Zoom account under um, Kingdom Praise Ministry. We're excited about that. Um, outreach has been postponed until next month because of illnesses and a lot of things going on. It was a perfect storm. I read, then it rained too, so it was a good time. I, you know, so God had it all set up for us. We were postponed to April, so we're getting ready for that. We already started purchasing things. And while I think about purchasing, those of you give it to us, we, we're so grateful for those who give each month because your giving allows us to be a blessing to other people. Amen. Amen. I told you guys when we first started this ministry. I told you guys that my family, we're going to do it. But it's so much easier when people join together and do it together. We'll do it. We have to do it alone. We're going to help people. But it's so much, it's such a blessing to see those of you come out with us, those of you to pray for us, those, those of you who constantly give to the ministry so we can keep on supplying for those who are in need. Amen. And we have, a, and those who have been with us know that you, you leave differently. Everyone who's come out has gone back saying, you know, I'm so glad I came out. Those who help. Because it gives you a different insight to see as people who really need things, how grateful they are, and how we seek to reach people not only uh, by preaching, but by showing and demonstrating the love of Christ to people. So we thank God for that. So um, thank you for your outreach. Thank you for your offerings. Uh, we don't focus a lot on giving in our church, but it does take money to run ministry. Amen. Everything costs money. So we thank God for those who faithfully give to this ministry. We are so grateful for that. Amen. We also are excited because we have... <laughs> we have a um, a praise uh, ministry, uh, a worship ministry, kingdom praise worship ministry, and it's, uh, a small ministry. But and when you have three people and two of them missing, that means only one left to do <laughs> to do wow. ministry this week. Amen. Uh, so we have one who's going to stand by herself this morning and lead us into a congregational song. So let's get with this this morning. Amen. All of us lift our voices. And I want to, and these people in Pakistan were just singing to the top of their voice. They didn't care. They had no music. They had no drums. They had nothing. They were just singing. They didn't care about their tunes. They didn't care how they sounded. They just sung, hallelujah. And they were singing loud as they could. And I want us to have that same kind of spirit because I think we take a lot of things for granted. Amen. Amen. Because the air we breathe right now is from God. The seats we're sitting on is because of God. They were sitting on the floor. We have cushioned seats. I think God's been too good to us. Amen. We have control atmosphere, cushion seats, and we still don't want to get into the worship experience. Let's get into the worship experience. As Dawn comes this morning and, and leads us into worship, this hymn this morning, let's get with her and let's sing. Let's stand up to our feet and sing along with her today. All right. Amen. Good morning, Kingdom Praise. Good morning. Good morning, Kingdom Praise. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you know that God will give us assurance? Yes, yes. He will give us assurance. The assurance of salvation. Yes. yes. The assurance of an answered prayer. Yes. yes. The assurance of victory. Yes. The assurance of forgiveness. Yes. yes. And the assurance of guidance. Yes. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's give God a hand praise, a hand clap, stomp your feet. Yes. And shout if you want to. Let's praise him this morning, Kingdom. Kingdom praise ministry. Yes. For he is the Yes, he is, he is the he Lord is the of Lord. Lord. Yes, I is. come asking this morning if you um, have your uh, paper in front of you that you join me with the con uh, congregational hymn, Blessed Assurance. And please bear with me because this is my first time singing Amen. solo and without music. music. So I just Love ask music. God that he would just use me yeah, as he yeah. sees fit. Amen. Yeah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. 
Stepping out and doing what God called you to do. Amen. Amen. Doing the best you can for him. Amen. Amen. So you got to understand that um, the little boy who brought to Jesus, Jesus is about to feed a whole lot of people, right? The little boy, all he had was his bag lunch his mama gave him. But he was willing to give that bag lunch to the Lord. And guess what? The Lord fed thousands with it. So it doesn't matter that you say, I have a small voice or I haven't sang in front of people. God would take what you give him and use it to bless somebody. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. How many want to be that, that blank Amen. check today? Amen. And say, God, I give my life to you right now. Amen. 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 Y'all looking Amen. like you. Amen. Nobody want to be a blank check. <laughs> God, I give my life right now. Whatever you want to write on, I give you the right away. Amen. Amen. I remember hearing a testimony of a man. Uh, we had a conference at the Bible School of Bible, and he talked about his life and how destroyed it was and how much alcohol and drugs he was doing. But he gave his life to Christ. And he remember getting up on his, off his knees, and he said, Lord, if you can do something with my life, I ask you to do it with my life. He said in the P.S., after he finished prayer, P.S., Lord, do something with my life. And as a result, this man has served Baltimore Rescue for years and about to retire now and become chaplain there. And God's used him to touch so many lives. Unbelievable. So God's looking for not, we're going to see the day in our text. He's not looking for special people. It's ordinary people who he can do great things to. Yeah. How many of y'all say, I'm one of them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Y'all don't even believe it, do you? I'm telling you, you are, the, you are the one. When Jesus chose his disciples, he didn't go to places of education. He didn't go to places even the religious studies. He went out to the fishermen and the tax collector. He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And those few men turned the world upside down, influenced the world forever. Amen. Through Christ's power. 
Yeah. And how many know you can be that influencer? Yeah. On your job, in your home, on the street. Tell God, I want to be that influencer. I want to make a difference for the kingdom. And you watch God use your life. Um, this morning, mm -hmm. uh, our text is found in John 14, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. I started ministering this to my Pakistani family yesterday as lesson form and it had so much in it. I said, you know, Mike, you know what? I, I really believe God wants me to share this with the kingdom praise ministry uh, on a preaching platform. I want, I'm not finished with Psalm 23 yet. We only did one verse. But I felt like we needed to hear something like this today. Uh, let me read the text and I'll give you the title. John 14, verses 12 to 15. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whosoever, and, 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 and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. The title of this message is In the Name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Jesus has just finished telling his disciples that he was about to leave. But he told them he would not leave them comfortless. He told them that the Father would watch over them. He told them he had a heavenly home for them in the future. Their, their heavenly home was secure. He gave them hope for tomorrow. How many know you got hope for tomorrow? Amen. Because you are in Christ, it does not matter what crisis you go through. You have hope for tomorrow. Everybody can't say that. Doesn't matter what you face in life, you have hope for tomorrow. Doesn't matter who gets sick, who, go, who dies, we as children of God always have hope for tomorrow. Why? Because we have a heavenly home guaranteed us. If you belong to Jesus Christ, how many of you got a heavenly home? Yeah. You got a heavenly home, you also have a heavenly hope. Yeah. Amen. Jesus said, I'm yeah. going to prepare a place for you. It had that sound to you. Where I go, there you shall be with me also. We also have a heavenly home going. He said, I'm going to take you to be with me forever. So a heavenly home, a heavenly hope, and a heavenly hope going. We also not only have hope for tomorrow, we can get some help for today. How many help today? Yeah. Amen, 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 amen. I need some help right now. How many help right now? Yes. I need help right now. Amen. I know I got hope for tomorrow, but I got to get through the day. Amen. And I need help. So let them know that the Father loves them. How many know you got a heavenly Father? Yes. Amen. Do you know you have a heavenly father? I want y'all to think about this. My dad, I was sick with an affliction. And my dad looked at me one day. He said, son, if I could just take it off of you, I could handle it. And that really, you know, and every parent in here understand what I just said. Yeah. You would rather the sickness be on you than to see the sickness on your child. Mm -hmm. But see, my father, my earthly father had that desire, but he didn't have the power. Y'all better come with me this morning. Y'all better go with me this morning just a little bit. Amen. Amen. Go with the priest just for a little bit. All right. My, he my earthly father had desires for my life, but didn't have the means or the power to fulfill them. If he could, he would. He did everything earthly possible to make sure I had what I needed. But he was limited in his strength, his finances, even his life duration. All right. But you got a heavenly father. Y'all follow what I'm saying to you? Yeah. So my earthly father wanted the best for me. What do you think your heavenly father wants? <laughs> Amen. If my earthly father wants the best for my life, what do you think your heavenly father But guess what? Your heavenly father doesn't have limitations. He's got all power to say. Aren't you glad about that today? Yeah. So if he made my earthly father, my earthly father was like that, what is my heavenly father like? Yeah. Jesus let him know. You don't have to wait to die to know who father is. You can know him now. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So when Jesus did, Jesus demonstrated us how the Heavenly Father is and all he did. Then he told his fellows, you know what? He said, I'm not going to leave you alone. The work still has to go on. How many of the work still got to go on? Yeah. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but I'm not going to leave you alone because the work has to go on. And guess who the work is going to be done through? It's done through his disciples. He said in our verse today, he says, uh, he says here in this verse, 12, he says, Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Did y'all read that? Did y'all hear what that said? Mm -hmm. Jesus told his disciples, he didn't say the smart ones. He didn't say the educated ones. He didn't say 
the rich ones. He didn't say the poor ones. He said those that believe on me. How many go, I can afford that? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's something I can, hey, that's something you can do. That's something I can do, right? He said the ones that believe on me, you're going to do the works I do. Amen. How many of those time to get working? Yeah. The works I do, he says, you want to do. He didn't say you're going to do the works I used to do or will do, but he said you would do the works that I do, which means although he's in heaven, he's still working. Y'all get that? Nice. He's still working. How is he working? He's working through his people. I don't know about you, but I'm not satisfied with where I am. When I see what Jesus did, I feel like I'm falling and fall short. But notice this. He didn't say the miracles I did, you'll do. He said the works I'll do, you'll do. Many people take this verse and say, well, I'm going to start healing sick and raising the dead and walking on water and feeding 5,000. And God may use you to do that. But it's not about the miracles. It's about the work. And it's about his work in our lives. There's no such thing as a pew member in the house of God. Pew stinks. <laughs> Name well, right? Stagnant waters. What do stagnant waters do? Stagnant waters stink. Any Christian that's standing still got a funky life. Because in the Lord, you ought to be moving forward all the time. Amen. Amen. Works don't save you, but when you're saved, you work. Jesus said, if you believe, aren't y'all glad? He said, that just frees me, y'all. He said, if you believe, he says this, brother, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. How many believers we got in the house? Yeah. Amen. Y'all looking around uh, and saying, you see where y'all believe I'm looking for believers. <laughs> so he's talking to you, and he's talking to me. He that believes on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. That's enough, isn't it? Yeah. But he didn't stop there. He said, and. He said, and greater works than these shall he do. Greater works. Y'all understand that it can't be greater works in a sense of, of uh, quality because nobody could do what Jesus did, but he's speaking of quantity. When you go to the book of Acts, the first chapter, first verse, it talks about the record that Luke wrote. And Luke wrote a record. He says, these are the things that Jesus began to do. But how many know he's still working? Hallelujah. Amen. Then we go to chapter 2. You see Peter who was hiding out in the fire. Y'all remember that record? When Jesus got arrested, Peter was hiding out in the fire. You see Peter now standing forth preaching the gospel after the Spirit came on his life. And guess what? Greater works. 3,000 souls got saved. And in the third chapter, Peter and John, after healing a man, it says 5,000 souls got saved. Can you say greater works? Greater yes. works. Amen. And in chapter 5, y'all check this out. They were bringing, the, there was a multitude of people coming out to hear the word of God. They were bringing their sick, their sick people to the streets. And the Bible says that when Peter walked by, he cast his shadow on them and folks were getting healed. Y'all talk about greater works. Y'all say greater works. Greater, greater works. works. Amen. And guess what? All these works were done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So I'm here to tell you, I know I've been to school, I've been to seminary, and I understand that it's the apostolic age. I understand that God works signs to confirm his word. But I'm here to say right now that God is still working. Amen. Jesus is still working. He's still real. He's still opening the eyes of the blind. But let me tell you about a greater work. You know what the greater work is? The greater work is not that Lazarus got raised up in John 11. The greater work is that Lazarus was a saved man. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Which means that Lazarus raised from the dead was a great miracle. But Lazarus had to die again. But guess what? When Lazarus died again, he was in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So greater miracle than raising the dead is having someone receive Christ. And guess what? You and I are the instruments of other people receiving Christ. Greater work. Y'all ready to do some greater work? Yes. And it's by not only what we say, it's how we live our lives. Amen. Amen. It's how we have compassion for people. He says, greater work than these shall you do. Peter had that kind of life. So we want to see that he says here in verse 13, that whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that we're praying. Verse 13. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. That's not like a blank check, does it? Mm -hmm. Does it? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
whatever, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. It sounds like a blank check until you really read what it's saying. He didn't say whatever you ask in your name. He didn't say whatever you want. He said whatever you ask in my name. Y'all know what asking the name is about? We think, and I wanted to spell that today. We think as long as we say in the name of Jesus at the end of our prayer that everything's all right. Amen. We think that the name of Jesus is we cheat like a magical charm, a lucky charm. Y'all follow what I'm saying to you? Just say Jesus' name. You have people say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, over and over again. And we think somehow it's like an incantation that we say in Jesus' name, things are just going to happen like a, a rubber the genie bow. But that's the wrong idea, child of God. In Jesus' name doesn't mean that repeating his name over and over again gives you power. In Jesus' name means that you are using the authority he gave you. In Jesus' name means that you would ask, you would not ask anything that he wouldn't ask. Illustration. All right, I'm going to the bank, Cheryl. I'm going to the teller, and I'm telling the teller to uh, get me two big suitcases out. I want $10 million. Put them in small bills, and what are they going to do to me? They're going to laugh. Because I don't have anybody that much weight in the, bank, in the bank. That's not happening, right? So I, Ill I illegitimately came up to a place I had no authority to ask for something I didn't have. But what if, Cheryl, I walked in the bank with a check from Bill Gates and it had $10 million I had him sign it? If they confirm that signature, that money's mine. Why? Because of the name. Y'all follow what I'm saying to you? Because he has the authority. He has the power. He has the means. So many of us are trying to cash checks that Jesus didn't sign. Because we think that as long as I want it, I can claim it and walk on it, and we can declare it. And I'm so sick of people declaring the decree and stuff. You don't declare and decree, you defer and depend. Oh, y'all are here, like I said to you. Amen. The I declare and decree is arrogance. Jesus didn't pray like that. You know how Jesus prayed? He said, Father, if there's another way. He prayed until blood became to pour out of his forehead. Y'all read it. It's in, the, it's in the book. He said, Father, if there's another way I can do this without dying, if I can just get around this death thing, if there's another way, he said, uh, let this cap, this cup pass from me. Then he said what? Nevertheless. Y'all want to stop praying nevertheless, amen? So what he did, he prayed what he wanted, but he submitted himself to the Father's plan. So we don't declare and decree. We defer and we depend. Amen, somebody. Amen. You think you know God's will? Well, Jesus Christ knew the will of the Father, but yet he prayed. If there's another way, let this come pass from me. You want to tell me Jesus Christ prayed like that? Being the Son of God, God the Son, and you and I going to stand up declaring and decreeing, but well, we don't know? We ought to say, Lord, if it's your will, because you know what? Amen. His will was best for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Pray for your healing. Yeah. Trust God for your healing. Mm -hmm. But say, Lord, have your way in my life. And I can tell you right now, the worst thing that ever happened to you is the best thing that ever happened to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know I got a witness somewhere. Amen. Amen. The worst experience you had wound up being the best experience. Why? Because you met God there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. God has a way of letting us go down to a place we can't see nobody but him. And then he says, now you can meet me for real. All right. yes. amen. amen. How many met God for real? You met him in a low place, didn't you? Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. And God has a way of doing that. If, if you're going to live a life that you always healed, then what you need God? What you going to call on God for? Yeah. All these people that got healed in the Bible, they had issues. If you don't have a test, you don't have a testimony. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. So we got to realize using the name of Jesus is more than just saying Jesus' name. It's saying that I'm praying if Jesus was here on earth and he is in me, this is how he will pray. How can I get to that place? I got to stay close. Y'all see why I went close to God? Because he said, if you ask it in my name, he said, I will do it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now, asking in his name is asking in his authority. It's asking uh, 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 in accordance to his character. So you think the name of Jesus tagging or anything? Well, what if I, uh, if somebody cut me off on the road and I want in the name of Jesus strike him? 
<laughs> you think God would honor that prayer? Why? Because it's not according to his character. His own disciples did this one time. I think it's in Luke chapter 9. Jesus went to Samaria, and Samaritans wouldn't receive him there. And they said, Lord, these are the sons of thunder, James and John, the colors they got. Y'all know why they call them sons of thunder? Because they had uh, anger issues, like many of us. How many of you adore the son of, of, of thunder? Yeah. Oh, don't push me. Yeah. No, they said, Lord, should we call down fire from heaven like Elijah did? And the Lord didn't answer that prayer. You know, he said, you don't know what spirit you are. I came to save life, not to destroy life. So you can't just attach the name of Jesus or we writing some illegitimate checks and we're forging. How many know we're forging Jesus' name on stuff he doesn't really have for us? So in the name of, when we in our prayer, and then if you hear somebody pray, they don't say Jesus' name, you think they pray illegitimately. Illegitimate. It's not a magical charm, y'all. We say in the name of Jesus, we're saying I'm praying in accordance with what I believe Jesus will want. And guess what? Sometimes God doesn't want what we want. It was a hard pill for me to swallow. Because I wanted certain things. And I wanted certain things to happen when I wanted to happen. And when it didn't happen, I get discouraged. Why? Because I was trying to have my will. And God showed me it's not about you, Michael. How many know it's not about you? It's not about what you want and when you want it. You said Jesus is your Lord. Now surrender to him. Who in Psalm 23, he says he makes you lie down. Sometimes he makes you lie down, doesn't he? Have I been there before? You didn't do it willingly, but he made you lie down. He made you... He put you in a situation where you couldn't do anything but just lie here. You couldn't fix it. How many know that some things happen you can't fix? You cannot control. We like to control everything. But you got to realize he is in control. My family has been going through certain things. I know God has a plan and he has a purpose in it. But sometimes it gets hard because you want to control stuff. Yeah. But how many know some of the best stuff happened in, under interruptions? We read, we had, we preached a few weeks ago about the man who tried to get into the house and and the uh, and the the house was filled. How they pulled the roof off and let him down. And Jesus saw that faith. Guess what? That was an interruption. That interrupted the whole service. But guess what? It was divine interruption. So every interruption may not be an interruption. It may be God stepping in, telling you, "This is the way I want you to go." We get all bent out of shape. Why? Because we can't control it. You make plans, your plans don't work. Guess what? Maybe God has something better for you. You apply for something, you don't get it. Maybe God's got better plans for you. You lose something, maybe God's got better plans for you. We got to learn how to do what? Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Amen. And say, Lord, whatever you want to do, it's all right with me. Can y'all say that this morning? Yeah. Lord, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's all right. How many know his, his will is best for us? Yeah. What he wills for us. He said not only that it has to be according to his character, according to his nature, according to his power, he said also that the Father may be glorified in the Son. What you ask him for will it glorify the Father? James said you, 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 you ask and you don't have because you ask and miss. You ask for the wrong reasons. He said if you don't have it, he said if you want something, he said ask for it. And older than James. If you don't have it, ask for it. It's okay to ask. But he says you ask and you don't get because you ask for the wrong reasons. James says, where the wars come at? The fighting's among you. They come from inside. We argue with each other because we got arguments inside of us. <laughs> we struggle with what we want and what God is doing. We want a certain thing. We want to have a certain way. We want a certain place for our child. We want our child to be here, the children there. But we can't control all circumstances. You know, parents, we like to be, we like to control everything. <laughs> Y'all know we are. I know I come with children back there that can say amen. <laughs> Parents like to control everything, don't they? <laughs> but some things you cannot control. And one of the hardest things I had to do for my daughter, especially, and she's probably listening right now, the hardest thing for me to do as a father, I had to turn her loose. She was going anyway. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But she was going, but I'm a fuss. She was going, and I'm going to argue. If you talk right and tell them right, sometimes you got to let them go. Oh. Yeah. They get to an age, you got to let them go. You know why? Because you can't save that child. Mm -hmm. That child has to get their own testimony. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You can't control that destiny. Maybe God is working something in their life that you don't want to see them hurt. You don't want to see them messed over. You don't want to see them go through pain. But sometimes you got to let go and let God do the situation. 
for why I'm trying to control things. I think I told y'all a few weeks ago why I'm trying to control things and fix things. God reminded me why I saved you. Amen. Come on now, somebody. Y'all know I'm looking at this room. I know all of us in this some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen. That we shouldn't be here right now. But yet God got a hold of your life at the right time before you destroyed yourself. Amen. Amen. I was running. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I wasn't walking. I was running into destruction. Alcoholism. Drugs. Pornography. I was running in the wrong direction when God got my life. I'm so glad. How many glad he got you? Yeah. Hallelujah. I didn't find him. He found me. Amen. And I was in the mud. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. I was down. And I was going in a total... Uh, opposite direction. A church boy but still messed up. Y'all better come and talk to me this morning. Amen. How many of you get some church boys and church girls in the house are still messed up? Amen. Come on now somebody. Amen. Going to church every day and, and attending services and paying tithes and singing on the choir and doing all these things but messed up. How many of you messed up in the house? Amen. Jesus gave us an illustration about the lost coin. And he said the coin was lost where? In the house. Amen. Some of us are in the house and still lost. In the church and still lost. Because you can be in the house, but never have Jesus Christ in your heart. It's not where you are, it's who's in you. Amen. Have you ever come to a place in your life that you said, Jesus Christ, come into my life, be my Savior, and be my Lord. Now rule my life the way you want to rule it. Yeah. So in Jesus' name, he said that the, our request has to be the power in the name of Jesus. When you come and use the name of Jesus, you use it knowing that it's just like Jesus is praying. Just like Jesus is doing the work. That's why I have boldness today, says Don, because I realize I asked God to use me. Amen. And I believe he's big enough to do that. Amen. That's how you can stand up here and do something you never did before. Why? You ask God to use you. Amen. How you think that you will go forth, you'll do something different, something new, you'll never see anything different and new. To have something, y'all know what I've been saying. To have something you never had, you got to do something you never did. Amen. That's why I get weary sometimes. I'm doing my, I'm on my weight loss journey. I get weary sometimes, you know, denying yourself certain things and uh, doing extensive walking, and I get tired. And every time I get tired, the Lord reminds me, it ain't going I never promised you it was going to be easy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it can be done. Amen. And now I am 75 pounds lighter than I was. Amen. 75 pounds lighter and still on the journey. Amen. Amen. No pain. I'm not paying anybody. Nobody's cutting on my body. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? I'm not taking any pills and off of all my medications. My boast is what? In the Lord. Amen. I'm not on a program. I'm not on a Weight Watchers. Or I'm not Jenny Craig and Things for Girls, I guess. I don't even know. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't have nutricism coming to my house. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? I'm telling you what Dr. Jesus would do for you. Amen. That's what I'm telling you. It doesn't get hard, yeah, because you know what? You got to keep this body in control. You got to let somebody know you cannot control me. That God, this is God's temple, and God has given me what I need to do to be what I ought to be. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, Joyce Myers said this thing, I never forgot about it. She says, here I am trying to rebuke demons, and I can't rebuke the apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> How can we minister if we can't control ourselves? And the Bible says we ought to have self-control. Paul said, I keep under my body. And that's why, as a leader of God's house, God tells me in Timothy, I got to be temperate. So I want to set the example. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. I'm not trying to come down to nobody. God has told me I have to set the example for the congregation. And that's what I'm seeking to do. And that's in everything. Not just in word, but also in deed and in truth. Amen. So I, I'm going to get a bunch of people here eventually. When I come down 30 more pounds, we're going to talk about this thing. And we're going to do this, we're going to do this journey together to get off these medications, amen, amen, and get our temples together, amen. amen. We're going to do that for the Lord, amen. 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 Now I want to be an example to let you know it's possible. God can deliver you from any addiction, Amen. How many, oh, I'm about to finish. How many, how many act, former acts do we have in the house? Anybody been addicted? Y'all look at me. I, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about sugar addiction. Amen. Come on now, somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Y'all think about, well, sugar like a drug is worse than a drug. It's worse, worse than cocaine. I'm telling you right now, that was my biggest situation is I was a sugar holic. Mm -hmm. And it's no different to me, any alcoholic. A drug addiction is no difference 
When I see sugar, my eyes light up. When I see positive, take my eyes light up. I get excited. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so hooked on sugar, y'all. I think I told y'all this. So hooked on sugar that if I couldn't find anything around the house to eat, I would go to get crackers. I would go get uh uh whatever I could get. I I grab uh I get I get the box the bag of uh we have these manischewitz cherries. I would walk around the house if I couldn't find an ice cream. I would go in the cabin and get the cherries and get a fork and just dig down that fork and eat the cherry. <laughs> Addicted, y'all. And I'd be so embarrassed that I would hide the stuff in the trash I ate. I want my go by the trash can and say, he, you mean he ate all that? <laughs> Addicted. But just like the man we saw today named Legion, who could not control himself. Amen. He was under the monarch floors until he met Jesus. Amen. I thank God. How many thank God? I thank God for deliverance today. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? In this walk of God, you got to be careful. You know why? Because that stuff will slip back up on you again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Realize this. And I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm flowing with this one because I want somebody to understand this. This is my testimony I'll give because the name of Jesus brought me through. The name of Jesus power to you. you can do this in, in Jesus' name. You would ask in the Father. I want the Father to be glorified in all I do. Let me tell you. My sugar was 8.2. The doctor said I got to increase your medication. Went from one man four men to two. I started having a problem with my heart. That's what really turned me around, y'all. Well, I couldn't breathe. I was sitting in a chair, couldn't breathe, some kind of hot thing going on. All right. Now, my sugar is 5.8. Oh, amen. Wow. The doctor want me to get down to 5.3. So in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 I want the victory. Y'all follow what I'm saying yeah. to you? This is so important we understand this because people are dying, y'all. Yeah. Dying because of complications behind diabetes. And I want none of my friends I had to go through that. I was in the hospital a couple years ago. And I had untreated diabetes. And I was sepsis. And the nurse told me, y'all heard, some of y'all heard my testimony, that if I had gone to bed that night, I probably wouldn't have made it. So I came out of the hospital differently. Leg all jacked up, couldn't work anymore. And I wish that I could blame it on somebody. I wish I could blame it on the devil. Y'all see what I'm saying? I wish I could blame it on the doctor. I wish I could blame it on somebody else. But God said to me, let me know that this is not anybody's fault but yours. Because I told you to turn this thing around. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 I couldn't blame nobody. I like to go to work because I can't work no more because of my leg. I, I, all, I can do all that. I can blame the, the leg, the job, but really all the situations that happened, it was my fault. How many know you got to be honest sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. The stuff that's happening in your life, it's not somebody else's fault. It is your fault. You want to blame the job. The job mistreats you, and this one mistreats you, and they didn't let me go, and they don't. Oh, but now all that all I'm doing, God said, you know what? If you did what you wasn't to do, you wouldn't be in this situation. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But yet God in his power, God in his grace, guess what he did? God did this. He turned this stuff around in spite of me and worked it out for my good. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Not because of me, but in spite of me. How many know that? Mm -hmm. I'm only here by the grace of God. How many know that this morning? Mm -hmm. Only here by the grace of God. So when you, do, you use the name of Jesus, it is a great privilege. It's a great honor, but it's also a great responsibility. Don't sign his name to stuff that's illegitimate. Amen. Amen. If you don't know, say, Lord, I don't know. This is what I want. Don't we go around claiming somebody's husband in the name of Jesus? <laughs> claiming somebody's job in the name of Jesus? Claiming somebody's house in the name of Jesus? Claiming somebody's outfits in the name of Jesus? Don't be doing that kind of stuff. Because you know what? It's not of his spirit and it's not of his will. And he won't honor that kind of prayer. Amen. When you get in the word of God and find out he wants people saved, he wants people delivered, 
Those are the kind of prayers you can pray. Amen. Amen. He wants you to live a, a life that's clean and pure. You ask God to help me. If you seek righteousness, guess what? God will show you. You want wisdom, God will give you wisdom. You want to know how to walk, God will tell you how to walk. You want to be, Don said she want to start 2023 off, walk closer to God, but look what God's doing with her now. If you want to do it, go after it. He said, if you believe, you're going to do his work. Amen. 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 I want you to know it's not about your financial situation. It's not about who you come from, who raised you, where you've been. It's about do you believe. If you believe, you can do the work he did. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm not done yet with this. Amen. Amen. I'm still running on. Amen. I still got hope. Amen. Amen. I still believe God. I believe in God in the face of opposition that God's going to work all this stuff out. Yeah. Wow, but how many believe that today? Give God a praise. Yeah. So thank God today for each one of you. I pray today that something has been said that would encourage your heart and your life. That when you use the name of Jesus, know there's power in the name, but it's not parroting the name. It's understanding the authority that God has licensed to us in the name. Understanding when you say in the name, you're saying I'm praying as if Jesus was praying. I'm praying as if he would want this. That's why I'm using the name. I'm praying because I believe there's power in the name. He's authorized me to use that name in a right way, a legitimate way, not in an illegitimate way. Amen. Amen. Not to get my way, but to get God's glory. Amen. Amen. How many of us for God's glory? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to glorify God, God will help you glorify him. Amen. 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 Help me lift Jesus for a few minutes before we close this. Let's, let's praise God right now where you are. Amen. Lord, we just want to thank you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. And as we present ourselves to you today as a living sacrifice, we're praying, God, today for somebody to give their heart and life to you. For somebody, oh God, to come to know you as Savior and Lord. For somebody, oh God, to come to know you as their Savior and Lord as a result of hearing the word of God. We pray, oh God, today this word will find a lodging place in someone's heart and life. We pray, oh God, today that someone will give their life to Jesus Christ. We pray, oh God, for those who are struggling as I have been struggling with addictions. Things we don't talk about in church. Addictions. Hidden addictions. Hidden sins. Pornography. All the other things that go on in, in the life of, of everyday ordinary people. But we need deliverance. But we ask, oh God, you will bring deliverance, oh God. Let them know right now that they have the power to walk on the serpents. You've given the power, of God, to walk over bad habits. You've given the power, of God, to walk a new kind of life. You've given the kind of power. It's not something we just talk about. It's something we can actually walk in and see demonstrated. We're going to do the works, oh God, you gave us to do, because we believe. Not only those works, but you said even greater works. We now, God, thank you right now, that, the, that the right now we can reach people in Pakistan and Africa and other countries. That's greater work. That's greater work. Not greater in quality, but greater in quantity. Able to reach for the kingdom. Reach out in the highways and byways by social media. I know Facebook had one plan and one purpose for raising money and all, but we use this, we use the platform and Zoom to lose these platforms for your kingdom, oh God. Amen. And we thank you right now for the opportunity of God to be able to stand and use these platforms for the glory of God. Get the glory, God. Get the glory out of our lives. Get the glory out of this minute. Get the glory out of the things that we do for your kingdom. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, family. Amen. God bless you. We're so glad to come into your home. We're so glad that you come to be with us today. And we actually continue to pray for this ministry as we seek to go forth to do what the Lord has called us to do. Amen. Amen. So, for my family and your family, this is Kingdom Praise Ministry, and we're signing out. Amen.